Hello and welcome to Health Assessment and welcome to the College of Nursing. We're so delighted that you've chosen East Tennessee State University for your uh, College of Nursing program. Um, I am Carolyn Merriman and I am one of many faculty that will be working with you this semester in Health Assessment. Both Catherine Powers and I are the co-coordinators and then there will be lab faculty that will work with you very specifically on skills. And that's very exciting because during this course, you're gonna have hands-on experience both in how to communicate and do a health history of clients as well as um, do hands-on and how to do a physical exam. So I think you're gonna be delighted. What I wanna do with this orientation is highlight a few things for you so that you'll be ready for your first lab experience also um, next week. Um, so the syllabus um, that, that you will be sent um, or have already received tells you the course overview and the course outline. You'll see that we have many topics to cover and we're very hands-on. I wanna emphasize right away to you all that the theory class that we're gonna have, the lecture or the activities that we do mesh together with the labs that you'll have um, in, in later in the week. So theory, the theory and the lab are one course. You get one grade at the end and they really do go together well and we as a faculty are working hard to collaborate and coordinate so it's going to be a, a total experience for you. I do want to point out um, in your syllabus about the evaluation methods. Um, back up for a minute, the student learning strategies include um, activities and participation in class, um, activities and participation in lab, plus you'll be using a book called Jarvis uh, by Jarvis for health assessment and you'll also be using a lab manual. So those are two very important um, resources that you get, that you read, that you use, um, both for class and for um, uh, lab. So please bring them, whether you're in class or in lab, bring both of those books with you and use both of those books for preparation. Another thing that is part of the College of Nursing is um, using assessment technology, ATI is what we call it, and you will have assignments for to look at video clips and how to do different parts of the exam with ATI as well. So um, you'll see that on the course calendar, and if it says, you know, do an ATI video clip, then you need to go to that resource and, and use it. You'll also be taking some um, evaluation exams on ATI just to help you practice. There's also another part besides theory and the lab, that's the skills lab. You'll also be doing a simulation lab where you'll have mannequins that breathe, that make sounds, and you'll get to practice and also have a, a little bit of a performance a check off on a simulation experience. So we'll go over more of those things, but it's very exciting that all those pieces will help you become very proficient at doing a head to toe exam by the end of this course. So, Evaluation methods, I want you to look with me under that topic area in your syllabus. You will have three theory exams. Each exam will be worth 100 points, and they are weighted at the very end um, with those percentages that are there. Um, exam one, two, and three, you are also going to get um, points for what we call in-class activities or quizzes that's in the theory uh, part. And at the, um, you'll also see that there's lab um, items under evaluation. You'll be doing a vital sign practice. And as a matter of fact, um, the first lab that you're going to have next week will be a lab for practicing, taking blood pressure, pulse, respirations, temperature, height and weight, and pulse oximetry or the pulse, uh, the oxygen level of your patient. That's what you're going to practice next week, and then when you're ready, we'll be checking you off on your vital sign skills. You will have some written lab assignments that go along with lab, and they're in a what I call the course packet. So what I downloaded you on D2L was your syllabus and also what I call your course packet that really outlines each of the assignments 
the expectations in lab, and each of the assignments in lab. Now you'll also see under evaluation that there's a few components. Each of you um, will be practicing every week and will help you pull things together. And so you're going to have these three exams in theory and then the culmination of your experience is to do a final head-to-toe performance exam and write that exam up in medical terminology. Um, so those are really important final performance exams that you will do and you'll be ready for them because we'll help you get ready for them. Another item that is a checkoff is something called the simulation checkoff and that is where with the mannequin you'll be checking off specific vital signs and listening to abnormals and, and responding appropriately and with your practice on what those um, vital signs mean and what they are. So um, you also will have weekly lab participation and documentation grades. So all of that comes out to be 100% for the course. Now what I want to emphasize to you and if you um, is that you have particulars that have to be met before you can have all of these grade percentages put in. So if you'll look um, um, on the, the next indication it says, as indicated in evaluation methods, the health assessment course has both a theory and lab component. In order to be prepared for the final performance evaluations, which are the, the exam, the head-to-toe exam, and the write-up exam, um, you will uh, have to achieve a minimum of 75% average and will equally average the three theory e exams. I said the theory exams are 100% each. Those three exams will be averaged and you have to have a 75%, which is our pass rate for the College of Nursing. When you achieve that 75%, um, you will be eligible to sign up to do that final performance exam. And so that is the requirement here. We, we need to know that you have met a 75% pass level competency in understanding and knowledge before we want you to check off with that final exam. So that's one of the things that um, is important for you to note as you're reading this. Um, if the other thing that um, you'll see in your syllabus are specific course requirements and um, it goes basically through each of the exams and in class activities. It does specifically talk also about the final performance. So let's have a scenario here. You've taken your three tests in theory and you've got above a 75, 75% or above. Now you can take your final performance exam. The other thing it talks about is that the final performance exam then when you do that head to toe has to also be passed at 75% and there are some critical elements on there that have to be met. We will go more into detail with that. You also have to make a 75% on your um, head to toe write up. So we just figure that those are really important uh, parameters and set guidelines to make sure that you are competent when you leave health assessment and that you've got the skills you need to further yourself in other clinicals and also eventually as a registered nurse. And our goal for you, of course, is that you be the best, most competent registered nurse and that you'll, be, you'll have the skills to do that by the time you're finished with our College of Nursing and certainly by the time you're finished with health assessment, you'll have those skills to, to do an exam. Um, there is um, a simulation lab checkoff and once again we, we require you to um, have some critical um, elements and pass that at 75% as well. Um, you can see the College of Nursing grading scale highlighted in the syllabus and please note once again 75 for the College of Nursing and above is considered passing. There's no reason all of you can't make an A in this course. Um, we want you to work for an A, study for an A, and perform for an A, and that's our goal for you as well. The um, required text is uh, the newest Carolyn Jarvis physical exam and health assessment. So um, you should see the newest edition in the, um, in the bookstore. And if you can get a good medical dictionary, 
um, that would be helpful for, for those of you that are new to the world of medical terminology, just to help you get understand because we move pretty fast and we use a lot of medical terminology. I just want to emphasize that if any of you have um, a need for accommodations related to disabilities that you have been um, cleared through the ETSU's students, uh, um, the ETSU's disability services, then please let me know um, as soon as possible and certainly before the first test so that I can help you get the accommodations you need for testing. Um, we do talk about professional behavior in this course. And I want to emphasize to you that this is our first College of Nursing course. I know that you're taking communication, you're taking patho, and of course communication and professionalism is important in those courses too. But there is a hands-on component here. So um, we intend to treat you with respect and we expect the same courtesy as, as far as professional behavior. Um, you, I would like you to read that section about professional behavior and, um, and you're adult learners and so we don't need to go over that except to say that that is an important thing and we do follow that. Um, there is a testing policy also and we, we do our tests on something called exam soft which is a computerized test. So we ask that all of you um, have available a laptop computer or some other kind of device for you to be able to take your computerized tests. If that is a problem or an issue for you, there are a very limited number of computers that we can help arrange to, for you to get um, during that testing time. But you need to also let us know about that early on. Um, there is a testing policy that talks about exam behavior. You'll also see um, a computer policy and social media policy. Um, Another policy in here is called attendance and preparation and, and we just know that, that it's important that um, you do attend. Um, if there's an activity in class that we're giving points for and you're not there, those are not made, you can't make those up. We also have to have you in lab and we have what we call excused and unexcused absences um, and if you don't contact a faculty and even if you're sick and still don't contact a faculty in advance then that is considered unprofessional behavior and it is unexcused. But you have to let us know so that we can um, help you in that situation. Because we're um, in exchange of communication, medical information and also um, starting to put hands on in a situation that's a nursing situation we want to emphasize HIPAA, and I know at the medical doctor's office or nurse practitioner's office you talk about HIPAA, but information is confidential in this course. You don't share with other people about any other student or anything else that's not appropriate, and that's what we talk about as far as um, um, keeping information confidential. So there is a situation, um, there is a class and lab attendance, and those are required. Class and lab attendance are required. Um, again, in the event of an um, illness or emergency, contact the course faculty, either um, the theory or lab, or contact myself. I'm the major, I'm the course coordinator for this course prior to the time that you need to be absent. Try to, if it's a lab situation, to contact your lab faculty um, in, in, in advance if possible. So be sure you sign the attendance form each theory or lab day because that's how we track with so many of you. That's how we track if you've been there or not. Um, unexcused absences can um, affect your final grade and there's some percentages to, for you to look at in there. And you, a student that has two or more lab absences, you're just not going to be able to pass 2030. So uh, that's not to sound punitive, we just need you in that lab setting so that you can continue building skills week to week. So please look at that as well. Um, there is a very specific course policy about privacy and respect. Since we will be getting a lab partner, partner and examining each other, um, you will be wearing a patient gown that will be given to you. And also, you will be given an armband, some sample armband, so we can simulate a real patient situation. And underneath that gown, under the privacy and respect, it talks very specifically about at no time should someone feel violated. So please read this. 
and I, I'll just I'll just preface it. Supervised lab practice and competency testing of health assessment skills are required. Students will select lab partners among their classmates. You're expected to maintain privacy for yourself and your lab partner using gowns or drapes. So use a drape, which means a sheet of some kind. At no time is any student required to expose the female breast or male or female genitalia. In order to do this and maintain proper assessment technique, female students may A, wear an exam gown, bra or tank top underneath with the opening of the gown to the front or the back, or you could bring a volunteer of their choice to serve as a model during practice or competency testing with advanced notification of the instructor. Um, you also can wear shorts, uh, such as jogging shorts, should be worn during any lab practice or lab exam. If you're uncomfortable working with a fellow student, provisions for students to be placed in another section or another partner will be made. Um, you should bring that to your faculty or to the course coordinator. This is a legal issue, just to make sure that everyone is protected. Um, as far as learning strategies, just be prepared. Be sure that you review and complete any um, ATI assignments that you might have. Also, um, and that includes the computer modules, also, we are going to give you opportunities in the theory class to start your lab manual, filling out your lab manual and getting ready for lab. So we're going to designate some time to do that in class. Your lab manual needs to be filled out prior to coming to lab, especially um, the health history portion. When you get to lab, we want you to focus on the objective exam, the objective exam and learning how to write it and pull it all together because it is a, certainly a skill to learn how to pull those pieces together and document correctly. Um, we ask that you bring once again your text and your lab manual to class because we do hands-on as well as to um, the, the lab. We ask you um, to buy a stethoscope, a blood pressure cuff, um, there's a few other things, a centimeter ruler, pen light, and watch with a second hand. Now those, um, that equipment needs to be ready for your first lab, which is next week. So if you have lab on Tuesday or Thursday, bring your equipment with you. And if you need help just kind of pulling it together, your faculty will help you. We'll look at it with you. Um, so that's next week. And um, come prepared to do some hands-on with your with your um, fellow students. Um, another thing about dress code that I want to talk to you about is that you need to purchase um, a white lab coat and you need to purchase uh, the seal blue scrubs um, and a name tag that will be used the remainder of nursing school. So um, you will be using these scrubs um, to the, uh, both the theory class and the lab. You've got two weeks to get this done, two weeks to get this done. And so it's by the third theory class on Monday and that third week of classes in the lab. We expect to see you in blue, which is the seal blue lab um, uniform, I mean the seal blue uh, uniform for this course. Um, as I said, a gown will be distributed uh, for you to use all semester while you're doing your practice as well as um, an armband. Um, and then one other thing I want to tell you about is that we want you to practice, 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 and then we will get you an opportunity sometime towards the end of the semester to do a community, um, a community blood pressure screening. We're hoping to identify even um, some kind of uh, fair, health fair, or going to a community center of, for senior citizens so that all of you will have an opportunity to do some kind of blood pressure screening outside of your own lab partner. And we're very excited about this as faculty. Um, so that community experience will be e during either class time on Mondays in the afternoon or it's possible we might be doing it on a Wednesday or Friday outside of the normal class time um, so we'll make sure that everything is cleared. It never, none of health assessment um, opportunities should interfere 
with your other classes. And I just want to make that clear to you is you should never um, miss another class for health assessment opportunities. And so um, we will let you know way in advance so you can look at your schedule. This will be just a community experience that will require about two hours of your time so you can really get some hands-on experience in the real world. Um, this is um, an overview of health assessment syllabus. There's also something in here about um, your lab protocol and what to expect in the lab. Um, you, I just want you to be aware that the lab is, when you come to the lab, you should have your lab manual filled out. You should bring your book with you because it's got a lot of pictures and help with terminology. When you get to lab, on time, be on time, um, no lates, no tardies on, in lab, but be on time, the, uh, the faculty will check you in. You will have an opportunity when you come to lab to, um, after you've been checked off with vital signs, when you first come to lab, you're gonna wash your hands, you're gonna, um, have an opportunity to take somebody's blood pressure because we're going to practice blood pressures every single week and then settle in and the faculty will show you a video clip of whatever the skill is for the day after the video clip ask any questions you need then it's time to partner with somebody with your partner and go practice the skill for the day so that's the general way that we'll be doing um, the lab during the two hour period of time you can also note that during that time you'll be in small groups going to the simulation lab to even expand your knowledge more with a mannequin. So come in, wash your hands, and we'll be doing vital signs or blood pressure and pulse on somebody. Watch your video clip and then get going and use that time to practice your skill as well as practice your write-up. That's what our goal is for you. There may be a little tweaking and, and um, a little bit of changes with your faculty and certainly they have the freedom to do that with you. So um, when you use the lab, remember there's no shoes on beds, no eating or drinking in the lab, and in the simulation lab, no ink pens. We just don't want any ink pens at all. Um, all right, so leave the lab better than you found it. You're going to see at the end of the syllabus two things. One is a simulation lab participation and confidentiality form. This form is needed by Teresa Wexler. Ms. Wexler is our simulation coordinator. And also, um, you're going to see that you have uh, a, 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 a statement of understanding. And it says that you've read the entire syllabus and the manual, and including the course policies, and that you agree to abide by them. Basically, it's stating that you're, you're on board with us. You're also going to see a course calendar, and we can go over that more, but if you'll see with the course calendar, it's got two columns. One says lecture and assignment. That's what you should be doing as you get ready for your, um, your, your course. The second one says what you're going to be doing in the lab, before the lab and in the lab. So look at the course calendar um, for next week. What you're going to be getting ready for would be vital signs. So it would be a good idea for you to read chapter nine and start working in your manual on chapter nine, which are the vital signs. So um, vital signs are chapter nine in your Jarvis. Get ready for it. And I, I'll, if there's any questions about any of that, please let me know. Now the other document, big document that you've been given is something called the course packet. And the course packet is going to once again remind you of the lab policies. There is a table of contents in there and every single assignment is in there. Um, and, uh, and the grade sheets that you need to, to take care of those assignments. You have a vital signs um, guideline and that's what you're, what's going to guide you the next couple weeks when you're practicing blood pressure, pulse, respiration, temperature, height and weight. You will also see a nutrition assignment, a health history assignment, guidelines and grade sheets. Um, and then there's some practice guides. For every week you go in um, past the vital signs, you're going to see a system and it'll say this is what you need to do. This is how you need to 
practice the skill, and then these are the important things to write up. Your faculty will go over that more with you in your lab setting. There is also at the end of this course packet, the specific guidelines for your head to toe. And I promise you we will go over those again, but if you can at least overview what is involved with that. And then when Ms. Powers and I come to class, we will be working with you and your faculty and lab will be working with you to make sure you understand those um, guidelines. Um, there's also some guidelines in here about the simulation checkoff. So you've got some really important documents in this packet that will be clarified for you more. And so read through it, kind of get an idea of what your assignments are going to be. But when we get down to the specific assignments, assignments we will help you. Um, so this is just an overview and an orientation to the course. I can't wait to show you um, and demonstrate for you how to do that head to toe that you're going to be doing and to see how you're progressing. But um, please um, feel free to come to me. I prefer that you call me Mrs. Merriman in our, in our communication. Um, and so anytime that you need to speak to, to myself or Ms., Mrs. Powers, email us. Um, there is a communication policy that we're implementing also that says that faculty will do their very best within 48 hours to return emails or phone calls and each faculty will let you know how is the best to contact them. But that does not include weekends or holidays. We are not obligated to um, review those uh, emails or phone calls over the weekend uh, because we have other live issues too and, and families. But we want to talk with you. We want you to succeed. So make, um, be, be aware that you have to give yourself plenty of time if you need a response from a faculty and we'll do everything we can to communicate back with you because our goal for you is success and we're excited to help you meet your goal of becoming a competent expert um, caring nurse. So this is just our overview. Welcome. Welcome on board. Um, the journey's beginning. Thank you so much.